Hi, my name is Matt Brechtel. I'm joined by Jose Eduardo Pieri. We're members of the Young Practitioners Committee. And today we're joined by INTA President J. Scott Evans and INTA board member Karen Sandberg to learn how to become a leader in INTA and develop your career as you progress. Yeah, we would like to learn a little bit of your experience in volunteering for INTA, um, but being a Young Practitioner Committee, we would like to know how young you were when you started this um, with INTA and helping out with INTA. I had been practicing about two years, about a year and a half, when I first came to my um, first INTA meeting. And um, my connection in was the general counsel of Fruit of the Loom, and she had been somewhat involved, but not very involved. And that year, I also went to the leadership meeting in Jacksonville, um, Florida, and I met Jeannie Smith, who was the head of the global international practice for Baker McKenzie. And we just got to chatting, and I started talking about the things I was interested in, and she told me to get involved with certain committees. And I did, and it was a really good boon. I also would say to young practitioners, you have such an opportunity because you can get involved in new issues that are cutting edge, and that's what I would suggest you do, is find something that you're passionate about and look for a committee. And the greatest thing is this year and going forward, the committee selection process is going to be, give you a lot more information about what the committee does and what it works on. And I suggest that you sort of look at your skill set and the, interest, the, the, the things you're interested in and you try to match those. So as you spend more time, have you both been committee chairs or subcommittee chairs? What's the progression to work your way into the into organization? Well, I guess I'm a very classic example for that. Um, I started um, in a committee which now doesn't exist anymore, um, classification, which was part of Top C, so the Trademark Office Practice Committees. And um, I served in that committee. I became, after two years, the chair of that committee. Then I became vice chair of Top C and then chair of Top C. So I had sort of this eight-year career uh, in that group. And again, it's because I picked something at the beginning I felt comfortable with. Um, and then the Topsy group obviously also overlooking the OHIM work, which, you know, for me is day-to-day -day work. And um, that really helped me climb up the ladder. And, and at first I was so, oh, I'm not sure I'm still young and, you know, are there other people knowing so much more than me? But it turned out you grow in there. You really do. And, uh, and I mean, as always, when you also delegate in that sense, you have your subcommittees. I mean, there's, there's so much knowledge put in by everybody. So again, I would never hesitate. I would always say, go out there if, if that's something you like um, and build up your self-confidence. It's, um, I think my engagement with INTA has even helped me in my professional life because there's not, I mean, I'm a litigator, yes, I'm a court, but it's kind of always also the same thing. But I think um, the skills of presenting, of talking to people, of following also other, other people's thoughts. I mean, you have material discussions in these committees. You, have a Brazilian person, for example, say something, I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I realize, okay, his system is different. Um, you come from a completely different angle. And that helps so much also in, in your work back home because you've learned to sort of really not take your own little world as, as the nucleus, but to realize there is another world out there with different jurisdictions and even in trademark law, different approaches. And, and that really made a difference to me. And, and the deeper you sort of dive in, and take responsibility, the, the more exposed you are to this. And I, I always thought that was very helpful. This marketing, this personal marketing, how do you do it? How do you make the connections? How do you show your talent and how you're a reliable person? How did you do this? Well, I, I have two things because I had a firm and I had a young practitioner that I hired. And so the first year I brought him was 2004 in Atlanta. And I made him go to every meeting with me and every party. He couldn't believe it. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning and we're up at 7. And I said, because you are going to see what you have to do here. And then the next year I came and said, you can't be with me at all. Go out and find your own group of friends because we're not growing our practice unless you're making your own circle of friends. He was on the USPTO committee. And that's a very large committee with a lot of smaller parts. Um, 
but he really enjoyed that and i think that's how you do it is you find people that are sort of of your generation they may not be the decision makers now but in four or five years they're going to be getting more clients and more decisions and and that kind of thing and i think that um, building your own network within your own generation is a good way to do it ask people we've all been here in that moment we, we, we all know that stupid moment of walking in this room with three four hundred or more people and says oh i don't know anybody everybody's talking within themselves and and learn and i mean that's also what i absolutely recommend is to go to that first time what is it that first F &D presentation yes. Yes. which is usually on the saturday afternoon again i've met quite a few people there who i'm still seeing sort of like we say hello and how are you and we catch up and there were also all those little good hints as in you know, if there's a discussion between two people, don't interrupt. But if there's three or four people standing and having a talk, it's always allowed. I mean, unless you feel they're sort of putting their heads together like this. But, uh, you know, it's usually the chit-chatting when you come in. Huh? So you just stand there and say, sorry for interrupting. I'm whoever, Karen from Germany. And I've never experienced that people said, like, oh, this is rude to interrupt us. I mean, you have to have that sensibility what sort of a talk they have. But just do it, go out for it. And once you've done it 10 times, it, you just do it. I mean, and that really helps. And, and, and therefore also that presentation on the Saturday, I would recommend to anybody to go to, because that's exactly what that focus is on. You're either a part of Inta or you're not going to be a successful trademark attorney. It is the premier, world premier international yeah. association. We have 30,000 individual members. We are who governments come to when they're wrestling with issues. We're who the judiciary comes to when we're doing issues. So you either are going to have to make it work here or you're not going to be a success in your practice. You know, when they say the annual meeting, there are 9,800 people here for a reason. And that's because this is where it happens. This is where you meet people and you make it happen. Um, so I, I think that the challenge usually, in my opinion, is all in your head, right? You put up all the barriers in your head of what you can and cannot do. Um, and so many of us are trained throughout our lives that you can't fail at anything. Yeah, you can fail. Failure is not a problem. It's the recovery that's the problem and learning from the mistake. The answer is really easy. There is nothing that compares. Just INTA is the International Trademark Association and, um, you know, more and more an IP organization. I mean, internationalization is expanding more and more. I mean, that's very clearly on the agenda. And what about the impact of your volunteering to enter? Um, how has this changed and influenced your professional and personal life? Well, I have traveled all over the world and been <laughs> so many places I would have never been if it hadn't sure. been for Enter. Um, I wrote the uniform dispute resolution policy because INTA put me up as the person that should handle this in the ICANN world. Um, I have met and sat at dinners with the person who designed the internet, Vint Cerf. I mean, all of these are because of my um, involvement with INTA. And so it's, it's been amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And I have made some of the most incredible Incredible friends. It really is a network for life, and uh, and that makes it so pleasurable because it's not just work and, and hard and it, it's it's seeing friends and and also a little bit just okay what can we do for each other so somebody I know who could maybe help you or and or pick up the phone with a little question without a bill without you know it's just it's all that networking and that makes the difference. And so it ha it does impact your life in ways you'd never think. When you come for the first time and you stand in this big room with this big plastic badge on and you look around and you hear all these different accents you have no idea it's like i said in my speech yesterday you just don't know if that one introduction is the introduction that's going to change your life